she pulled that face at me again. In the reflection of the window above the kitchen sink, it was 6.17 and we had just eaten dinner. It was dark. Mum was washing the dishes with her back turned to me. Her reflection glowed against the darkness of the outside. Her lips were rolled back to reveal gum and teeth. Her jaw muscles rippled under wrinkled skin. The corners of her mouth yanked upwards to form a snarling smile. Her eyes bulged from their sockets as if ready to burst. Mum, please stop, you're scaring me, I said. She turned around, her face exasperated but otherwise back to normal. Her lips downturned and her tired blue eyes gazing at me with the usual mix of confusion and sadness. She thinks I'm acting out because of the divorce, as if I'm too young to understand when two people have grown to hate each other. At least I'll be able to sleep without hearing their shouts. I told Mum that I think she's having a breakdown because of the divorce. We bickered. I grabbed my laptop and stormed off towards my room. She went back to scrubbing the burnt scum off a frying pan. For a moment, I thought she was crying, but the smile in the window told me otherwise. I first noticed the face at about nine in the morning. We were in the car on the way to swimming lessons when I realized that I'd forgotten my cap. It's a cardinal sin to forget your gear especially when your mum is the instructor. Her bulbous eyes glared at me through the rearview mirror as she told me what a useless little girl I was. There was nothing funny about what she said, so I couldn't understand why she was pulling that twisted smile at me. About 20 minutes after nine, her hand was locked around my wrist as she dragged me through the empty promenade of the Oakville Mall. She had this curt power walk that sent clicking sounds echoing around the shuttered stores. I think she learnt it from one of her DVDs that came through the mail, the ones with smiling men in bad tan and cheap suits on the cover. They had titles like Be the Boss and Follow Your Power. Eventually, the sporty wear sign swerved into view. It was the only place that still seemed open. Mum didn't want to risk being recognised at a discount store. As if the teenager behind the counter or the fat, demented old lady wandering the aisles would know who she was. Like anyone would know who she was, I thought, as she sent me inside with a few bucks. The white fluorescent lights immediately gave me a headache and the stench of synthetic fabric made my mouth taste funny. I squeezed my way down the overstuffed aisles to the back of the store, where the swim caps hung pathetically on hooks. Mum says my head is considered oversized in the swimming world, so I had to make sure they fit. I liked the green one, but it squeezed at my temples, making my headache worse. No good. The only one that looked big enough was blue. I hate blue, but it slipped on easily enough. I stood in front of the mirror to see how ridiculous I looked. That's when I saw the face again. Have you ever seen those nature documentaries where the apes fight each other to death? Do you notice how they're always smiling? That's all I could think of as the face paced outside the shop, watching me with an ugly grin. Get the pink one so you're matching, it said. I turned around and there was my miserable mother again. She tapped her wrist at me before dramatically throwing her hands up in the air. When I turned back to the mirror, she was smiling again. I could hear her teeth grind as I reached for the pink cap. Diving is one of the most important parts of being a champion swimmer, my mum would always say. She knew this because she got silver in the 1998 World Championships gold in national. Her coach reckoned she had a solid chance at getting into the Olympic squad. Then her belly got too big. Turns out, the first time she had sex a few months beforehand, she and dad didn't wear protection. Me, the happy accident. I hate diving. I hate swimming. 
but I hate diving more. I can't get the angle right. The last time I tried, I scraped my ankle against the board on the way down and almost drowned. But at 11.21 a.m., there I was again, shivering on the end of the diving board. The other girls were standing single file behind me and getting real impatient. Whispers travelled easily against the tiled walls until they were drowned out by my mum's demands. Her shimmering smile insisted that I dived in. I could see the full spread of her teeth. It was like her skull was mocking me. Just dive in. The other girls are waiting. I was wasting time. Stop pulling that face, I yelled out, my voice loud enough to silence the whispers and the demands. Did your dad put you up to this? She yelled back. I looked up from the reflection to see my mom, my real mom. Her face tried hard to remain stern, but it couldn't help but let out a single tear. She wiped it away swiftly. He's turning you against me, isn't he? She said. I didn't know what to say, but I was relieved the smile was gone. But it wasn't, was it? It was still there in the reflection when I looked back down. I felt two hands press against my back and shove me forwards. The force sent my feet out from under me. My body buckled in an attempt to stop from falling in. My hands grabbed the sides of the board, but it was too late. The bottom of my chin scraped against the tip as I flipped over. The world turned upside down. The warped grin of the face beckoned me into the water. I screamed. My face stung as I hit the water. The acrid taste of chlorine burnt through my sinuses as I sank downwards. I turned my body and saw a white light shining down towards me. It illuminated a glistening trail of blood that wound itself from my chin. Shimmering faces looked down at me from above the water. I realised the face was amongst them. Its smile grew bigger as if the blood was calling it. The white light exploded as something entered the pool. A dark figure glided towards me with an eerie grace. My lungs tightened and my throat stung. I tried to swim deeper, but the figure was almost on top of me. Thick tendrils of brown hair whipped around its head as it pulled me close. I tried to push away, but the grip was too tight. Amongst the mess of hair, I saw my mum's face, the real one. She had a typical look of concern, but this time I felt relief too. We were both safe. She pulled me skywards. As I've been writing this, Mum came into my room with a plate of animal crackers and a glass of milk. She told me that she was sorry and admitted that she's been too hard on me. I don't need to go to those swimming lessons anymore if I don't want to. I tried to bring up the face pulling again, but she took a deep breath and suggested that I go see a therapist. She thinks that maybe the divorce has taken a toll on both of us. But I know what I saw. I know she only pretended to leave the room after she apologised. Why do you think I'm still writing this stupid story? I know that if I stop writing and turn off the laptop, I'll see her twisted smile reflected in the black screen. I know it's her breath that I can feel on my neck. Mum, please stop. You're scaring me.